Welcome to another Liquid Bullet Productions. Uh, we're back again with Mr. Alfie Lewis for part two. Alfie, how are we doing? Fantastic. Let's go for this. Yep. So, um, Alfie, I'm just going to pick up on where we left off on part one. So, we were talking about your um, your career, you're fighting in the World Championships. So, around that time, I was sort of it, uh, still a kid up, upcoming, you know, through the ranks. And... Uh, your name was on all the front covers of the magazines, combat, fighters. Also, I don't know if you remember back the old VMA, Video Martial Arts videos. It was always on there. And um, I remember a big a big storm brewing about a fight with Kevin Brewerton, uh, an American guy, as far as I can remember. Can you run us through a little bit about that? Yeah, Kevin was a, a great fighter, by all accounts. Uh, I left the little guy. Starts the freestyle, uh, so Kevin become their star boy. I rightly so because he, he's a great fighter. Uh, before that, I'd fought Kevin back, I think it's '79 in the Yorkshire Open. Before he was famous, right? Before I was famous, or not too famous, whatever you call it. Uh, so I fought him. He's a totally different fighter than he become. Because he went to the States and he uh, he got things going, he got a new system. Back in 83 World Championships, he was at the ringside watching me with a big fucking American son, <laughs> a cowboy hat <laughs> on. Uh, that, that's where his evolution started. Uh, so we, we actually clashed regular Kevin and I on a circuit. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was a conflict of styles. He's very tight and wrapped up. I was very open and combative. Uh, but he's a great fighter. He's very, very fast. Very on point. Uh, thank you. Thank you. you know, yes, every time he scored, well, thank you. That was Kevin. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to be a crack. <laughs> uh, but he, yeah, I had it all, Kevin. He, and it, plus, at the time, we were enemies. That was it. Right. Now we're friends. Yeah. We're friends. Because the war's over. The war is over. Yeah. Yeah. You come full circle. Uh, we had some great scraps. We had some great scraps. I remember one in particular. It was in Manchester. Uh, I'd left them out for political reasons. And so uh, I told my club that we're going to go to the FSK, Manchester, and we lose to the Lao, I will close my club down. And I meant it. It was such an important step. I will close down. I wasn't bothered. I'll do the own thing by myself. If they can't represent me and beat that team, I'll close the club down. So they're all set for the war. And they're, they're so excited. This is what martial arts is all about. This is what it should be. Tonight we're making history. Tonight we are making history, and we all play part, place a part in that. Uh, so he goes down there. I don't get me wrong. I had nothing against the actual allow fighters. It was. It's like, it's like the government, or tits, 
our people are good. You know, so you, you don't blame the, the people for the government's actions. So yeah. a lot of the loud fights I got on with, but they had to protect their uh, association. I was protecting my, my status. So uh, I arrived, we arrived at the competition. Now when we arrived, I would not talk to anybody in competitions. It was, it was not a social event. I wasn't there to say, how are you doing? I didn't give a shit how you were doing. I've trained for so long to come here and beat you. I'm not going to converse with you. How's life? How's your wife? I don't care. I didn't care. I don't care. Because I, I did what I did in a professional manner. I don't go somewhere. I have to work and all my, my tits up. I, I, train, I, I train like a professional. That's why I was up top. And people at the time were like uh, amateurs. Amateurs is an amateur sport. I was an amateur sport, but I trained like a professional. So I, I want some results because we boxing history. That gave me impetus to train that all the time. So uh, a guy called Alvin Mighty. Do you know Alvin Mighty? No. <laughs> I got blessing or slappy. <laughs> Alvin was a great fighter. Alvin was a great fighter. Uh, really, really good fighter. And in fact, he never lost to Kelvin. Alvin. He never lost to Kelvin. So he fought the loud team. So uh, Alvin comes over to me and he starts talking. I'm like that. Not interested. Not interested in talking to you. But I fight you later on. I say nothing. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Then he says to me, he was out last night and he's tired. I went, what? So I started talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> Information that's detriment to his standards. Uh, anyway, uh, I fight Kelvin. I fight Kelvin in individuals. Yeah, individuals. So I fight Kelvin. Kevin. He comes out with his hockey mask on. I. Right. So all I'm thinking is pushing his face in with Josh hockey mask. That's something. Nothing else. I'm thinking he can't mask, so I can push his hard on. <laughs> <laughs> so, great fight, great fight. Uh, but some, I'm trying to drive this mask into his face. Really give it to him. And Kevin gets with lads. He never complains. He takes shots. I'm just saying, you take it, you give it. So at some stage, the mask comes off. And the imprint of the hockey mask all on his face. I beat him in that fight. Uh, that's the individuals. Then it comes, then it comes the TV event. And the semi-finals, we've got the loud. We've got the loud. So Kevin, Kevin's not giving me. He's not giving me. Because Kevin's there, Kevin's there with Kevin's there with I'm I'm going to give him a fight, you know what I'm saying? So he give you Alvin. Alvin Mighty, he was a friend of mine, they're all friends of mine. At some stage, I'm I'm breaking it off. And he, he Alvin is the nicest person in the world. But fuck he can fight well. Strong, strong. In the streets and in the, the points. One time he got attacked by five guys in a pub. Waste them all. The people think point fights can't do it. Point fights can't do it. If you, if you can't fight, you can't fight, regardless. You can't fight. Anyway, so I fight now. So I'm trying to crack him. At some stage, he goes to the ground. I fucking get him. And he's like, oh, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I said, fucking let me go. <laughs> 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 anyway, we beat the loud. This is the England, England team. It's that England team. Because the FSK back in the day, was, uh, it, was, it was a great concept. The original one. The original format because it traveled all around the country. And each association put their association team in. So it was a British team. We had the club team. But we were from one, one, one club, one area. And we were like that. We knew each other from, as family. Uh, so we beat them out. So I'm happy now. Uh, and then we go, it's the finals. Now we've, we've, we've lost our drive for the finals. So we fight. The TAGB, take what though, we were a great team over the day, Oliver, fucking strong team. And we lost by a fight or something, which normally would bother me, but this time I didn't because I completed what I wanted to complete. So it was a uh, good, uh, but you know, me, Kevin, I remember fighting Kevin also. Uh, I don't know the fights, 
I fought him in Gloucester. <laughs> strong, he is strong. Right? <laughs> hey, thank you. And he, 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 kept, he, kept, he, kept, he kept, he's like this. And he's come up for blitzing. Why are you blitzing? Your head's out of it. So I've developed this concept now. So I'm going like that, go back, go boom, 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 as I go back. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was a fight. Uh, but you know, he never complained. And he hit me with some good shots. But I never complained. Uh, I won that. I won that fight. And because of that fight, uh, he, he beat me, he can't beat me. So I took up my victories, okay? <laughs> uh, so, uh, because of our... See, we had no one to... We, we were freestyle. So we had no one to answer to. Association. You go wrong, you can discipline you. Who can discipline us? So we're the rabid dogs. We're the dogs of war. So, uh, can I just ask, sorry, Jeff, can I just step in there and ask you a bit about, um, so with the freestyle, can you just explain a little bit about that? You know what it was? I was part of the, of, uh, the loud guy. I, I left. Let's just put that. I left. Bob, Steve Bob left. You don't know. Frank Leach left. You don't know. Clive <laughs> Fox. Everyone left. You don't know. We're superstars. Superstars, these guys. So we all left at the same time because of the mistreatment of the fighters. Not getting what, not, not getting what you should be getting. Yeah. Uh, so you all left. Uh, so I was in the wilderness then. So I'm not going to call myself loud and give them my credit for my wins. So why is doing karate with Brian Sheen? <coughs> They'd say, make freestyle. But you smart, make freestyle. So I use that term, make, make freestyle. The concept. <laughs> so I got things, I made things more freer. So we incorporated like boxing, we incorporated all kinds. Of, it's like a, like a mixed martial arts without the throws and stuff, or the locks. Yeah. Uh, it was built towards sport, sport and savvy, but also towards the streets. Because it is my, my mentality. When I used to walk on the area, I used to look at, look at the opponent, I think, I'm gonna fuck you. That was the out, out loud thing. And, I, and the second thought was, would he bother me in the streets? And 99% of the time was no. So I just go for it. That 1% of the time that was yes, it'd be fantastic because I have to elevate myself. I yeah. have to rise the game. And I love that kind of fight. But like, I always, that was always my mindset. Would he bother me in the streets? Even so, these days it's more tip. Then you have to slam and take it. So uh, that was my mindset all the time. With around the area. Yeah. I, I, I all, always worked on my uh, body language. So I'd, I'd walk around in my head, would talk to one, as I said here. Uh, walk around, say fast, strong, copy beats over and over and over again. So I got the area. Upset. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, so I, I never thought win, but I never thought lose. Because when you want to win, you get tight, you get tight, you get tight, and you make mistakes, and you do yeah. something and it fails. So I, I had no plan. I didn't plan my fights. What I do, I stand around here and you watch it. Subconsciously, so I would take on board what was happening. So uh, say, I've got two fighters fighting. One's my side of, of the draw, other side of the draw. I watch them fight. And whoever scored with what technique, I'd know what they were going to avoid them all to. I know what they were going to to because I watch it, visually watch it, take it in, so I know what they were getting scored on with. And also know what they were scoring with. So, so, you, I, should, so you know what to expect. They're going to sort of run with the same techniques. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. See, you, you, for the game, as opposed to standing there, go, oh, school fight that, dickhead. You're there to educate yourself and watch and learn, as opposed to enjoy it. Uh, I've got a very really analytical mind, so I break things down. Uh, but <laughs> rapidly, rapidly. So once I've seen it, I've logged it. That's why I want to love your fights, because I had a photographic memory. And I, I can adapt. 
I, okay, share with sparring with my students in my dojo. We're sparring with students. We're, we're all world champions. All world champions. So sparring again. We some wars. I beat them. And I say, look, here's what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing to you. Don't let me do this to you. So I'm telling them how to beat me. Yeah. By doing so, I've got to elevate my game again. So you, 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 and, uh, I got to a stage where I made a Steve Cattle. Yeah. Like a fucker. Okay. <laughs> 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 but I was good friends with Steve. I tell you, you know, I met Steve Cattle. Go on. I tell you, I met Steve. I got invited to a karate competition, Liverpool, open karate competition. So we walk in, and we're black students, everyone's white. So we're small, small dead. But Steve was referee. Uh, so I'm fighting, fighting, fighting. So I, get, I don't fight, I get through to the finals to fight someone who is Steve's student. And it's a garbage, it's a garbage game, no pads, just garbage. And this guy called Jimmy Foley, he lives on a rat bag, right? Because he likes to punch you in the face, probably garbage. Yeah. But when I say rat bag, I say that uh, in the nicest possible way. Because, you know, you, you don't disrespect other warriors. So I'm fighting, I'm fighting, uh, I'm fighting Jimmy. Wow, it's a bit of me. No points. So, what's this? so I said to Steve, so what are you doing? <laughs> You're not supposed to argue. You're not <laughs> supposed to argue. I'll just take the I'll just take the feet. He can rip me off. I don't want that. I'm like this. A train costs money. A train costs time. A train costs effort. You can't rip me off just because you want to. So I will I will debate that. And if people say, oh, it's wrong ethics, those bad ethics rip me off. So I said to Steve, why am I getting the point? He went, you can't argue. I said, I'm argue. Ask the question. I'm asking you a question. Right? He went, he was like, a bit like taking the back at this guy. Because he was Steve Cattle. I was questioning him, you say, but I wasn't being disrespectful. I was just wanted the answers. Yeah, yeah. So he goes, no, Nick, today, no pulling back. No pulling back. So I said, why? Why am I going to pull back? And I thought, I'm like this. I'm like a boxer. Look, you know, this crap. Not crap, it's, it's, it's different, different preference. So he said, you're not pulling back. I said, well, it's a long, it's a long it was ago. Larry Holmes was a world champion then. So I said, Steve, the Larry Holmes does not pull back and he's still going down. He went, fight. But <laughs> 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 uh, I fought a student and he got me to bits. But, you know, at the game, I try to chase Riley with a try to grab him. At the end of the fight, Steve says, Come to my dojo to train. Now, back in the day, he lived, uh, I lived in a basically a black area. Let's say more white than black, but he had more black people there than white. And Steve Dojo was in all white area. So, it, it, to say it now is kind of strange, but it was like, so it's like, you don't go there, you don't go there. But I'm, I'm open. Look at me, I'm fucking light. My dad is my dad's black, 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 black. But I'm black inside, but I'm white outside. So and I, I have an issue with people. If you have an issue with me, he says, kill you, you fucking beard. I can live really terrorist. So, ends up going to see the book, uh, goes there and become friends. And every day, for about six months to a year, well, most days, we meet up. We run around Sefton Park, they go to our house, and in our house I have like a, a, a room with Sammy's in it, and we spar there, and he teach me stuff, and he taught me Tabby Tabaki, and Tabby Tabaki is body movement. Uh, and he, he said to me, look, he taught me uh, how Teddy fought, Teddy Lee fought, how Dick Charles fought, all these fighters, how Frank Brennan fought, he filled me in on what they did. Because Steve is like, he's very short, uh, it's called Stumpy, and he's short. He couldn't see that far in front of his face, right? And he couldn't kick really. But yes, he beat Terry O'Neill. Blimey. Okay, so tactics was his game. Uh, so I think good hands. I think he taught me how to, how to plan things out. Cause I, I was a reflex fighter. You throw, you, you throw something at you, at me. I fought a guy called Pat McKay. You don't know who he is there. No, you don't. No, I don't know. 
fucking one of the best Kratika uh, we've ever produced, Scotland. Uh, Pat, I was in a competition. I, I jumped, so please stay with me, okay? Uh, I got invited to Scotland, just when we were world title 83, to fight in this champion. The champions was four people in each division. Everyone's karate. I'm the only non karateka So I'm wearing a blue and white uniform, right? Uh, so I guess, I guess to a stage, I'm, I'm, fight, um, I'm fighting Pat McKay. Great fighter. Admiration for this guy. So I'm there. He sweeps me the leg. So like this in the air. I'm down in the air. In this leg round. I knock him out. Instinctive. He, he's, he's, oh, messed up. Uh, he gets up. He kind of, he beats me. So that's no big deal to me. It was a great fight. It was a great fight. You know what I mean? We won it. Uh, and we, we, Pat says to me, it's a hardest fight he ever had. And that's a compliment to me. That's a compliment yeah. to me. Anyway, uh, back to Steve. So Steve taught me uh, Tapa Zabaki, and he taught me how to plan something out. So eventually, he haven't got to think about it. Yeah. You should. So you reach, you reach a stage in your head where it's not a thought no more. It's just reaction. But you, you've got to go to a stage where you think about it, think about it, think about it, think about it. And then you haven't got to think about it because it's just there. It just logs in. So, so programmed it so it becomes second nature for you. Exactly, exactly. It's not a thought. You'll think, oh, it's God, it's God. It, 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 just, it just happens. It's just like, uh, it just happens. It's bullshit. And it's it's a feeling of peace. I know that it's a feeling of peace. You, you, you're not scared. You're not scared of losing. You're not fear. Because people put much pressure on themselves. I've got to win, I've got to win, I've got to win. <sighs> no good. Just be there. And your body will be the rest, your, your head will be the rest, your, your, your subconscious will be the rest. And once you let your subconscious take control, once it's programmed, you got to program it. Like a computer is awesome, but it's crap unless you program it first. Yeah? So you got to yeah. program yourself first. I think it's about not to think. Steve added uh, the last element to my fight. He made, he made me aware of tactics. Uh, and Russian, he really did. Uh, but the guy who finished finished off me was Ticket Dominant. When I went to Ticket Dominant, yeah. he was Ticket Dominant. That's where I first started my martial arts in uh, Ishimu. <laughs> I talked about <to> okay. <laughs> well, Ticket <laughs> to me is, is the best coach in the world. No, no, no. He put karate. Uh, yeah. And he actually got me on board. I went down. Do you want another story? Yeah, go on, that yeah, great. Right. I, I I went down on a, a trials. Uh, to get the Uko team. I don't think I want to do my stuff, but I want to work on the tippy, see what he what he had. Be genius, genius guy. So I go down to Dagenham, I think it was Dagenham for the open thing. Uh, so I trades as a few spars. Uh, and then I go to, I'm with the EKC. Uh, uh, the other the, the, uh, people who didn't want me on board, Dave Mitchell, all the clowns, all the politics, because yeah. I wasn't a correct you know, Sager. Uh, so I, I went to the EKC. I meet Michael Salesman in the finals. Yeah. Michael Salesman. Oh, you should know these names, yeah. Yeah. You know these names. <laughs> yeah, I know these ones, mate. <laughs> but Michael in the finals of the EKC Nationals. And a great fight. So I was on board the team. Uh, so I go to train in the, at the Crystal Palace. We were going up abroad. So we're all there, the team, to train. Uh, Tiki was so open minded. So open minded. He, he didn't. Try to restrict me, say no, no, no. He said, Power down. I was laughing away. Power down. Besides that, I observed him how to manipulate and control a team. Genius. But he was, he was the last bit. But the problem with the Ruko, 
I thought I made a lot of good friends there, thank you. Besides Big Charles, you know, Bobby. Uh, we went abroad quite a lot with Willie Thomas, who's now in charge of Hong Kong. Yeah. And uh, Molly Samuels, all good people, all good people. And open, open as well. So they, 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 they give me the, before then I was like, and they give me the, I was four, it was a very, very formal, Jesus Christ, like, like, like a, a Christian. I mean, it's the itch, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, it, it, you know, great experience to see. Uh, so, you know, so my guy inspires, he give me that fuck in the streets. Yeah. Uh, I tell you, inspired me in the sticks. And Steve Bath and Frank Lynch, who were just incredible. Uh, and I had Steve Cattle and Tiki. So, all these people blend who I am, I'm blending all. But eventually, you become yourself. You become yourself. You see, uh, but all good people. But uh, I should go back to Kevin. I mean, Kevin, Kevin fought me one time before he fought Tony Sewell, the second fight, which is outrageous. You ever see that? I don't think I've seen that one now. Second. Oh, outrageous. Been... Outrageous. Kevin went nuts. I mean, fucking nuts. Uh, <laughs> at the time. It was continuous. So I'm in bed about 12 o'clock at night to get a phone call. Hill, Hill, you know. I don't know it's fucking Kevin. It's like Kevin. So we're chatting away. He said, got this fight on. What are you going to do? Said, take it. You want to take it. You want to take it. Don't take it. You've got to be yourself. I can't talk to you, Kevin. She so took the fight. Uh, it was just nuts in the crowd, all kinds. Kevin was hyped for it. And the only way to find Tony Sewell, because Tony is a, a great technician. Uh, you know who Tony Sewell is? I don't know. I'm going to have to look into some of these names. <laughs> he's he's for no heavyweight, right? And he, his legs are off the hook. So he fought Kevin. And Kevin just took it to a scrap. Try, try and get it if you can. Try and watch that. It's, it's an interesting fight because it's a fight. It's a fight. Tony's trying to kick, kick, kick. Kevin's going, fuck it. Fucking great Well, you know, that, Kevin's got balls. And Tony has balls. So I respect. There's not one person that we don't respect in martial arts. If we don't respect them, I don't talk about them. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? So, I'll tell you what, I'm going to jump to Alfie. I'm going to ask you, have you ever had to use your martial arts in outside of training, like uh, in a street fight or such? I plead the fifth event. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I, I have, unfortunately. I have uh, numerous times. And has it, has it helped you in situations? as <laughs> like the training came in like, and worked well or? Well, let me, let me first say to you, right, uh, as a kid, I was fighting anyway. I was fighting the streets. So I go to Bruce Lee, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, it was to be a fighter. I thought, oh, yeah, be a better fighter. What it did, it took away the, the fighter off me. I was worse in the streets because... Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, oh, it destroyed me with, with naturalistics. Yeah. Uh, but once, once I got used to it, it become natural. So kicking in the head was like, like slapping me in the face. Uh, most most times it, when I fought in the street, I kick you in the face, knock you out straight away. That was it. It was that easy. Is it is that easy? Because I got talk correctly. People go kicks don't work in the streets because they can't kick. Because they can't. So we've got ineffective kickers. Oh, kicks don't go in the street because you can't kick me, dear head. And no. Yeah, it gives you that advantage, uh, I suppose, doesn't it? Well, it, it, when you first do it, you don't, you're not sure it's going to work, the kick. It's going to work, it's going to work. When you go, wah, that's it, doors are open. You know, you want to fight, look at that. Uh, and it's, that's it. People go, see it, people who can't knock out. That's because they're not hitting right. It's not hitting right. <laughs> Anytime I fought, I, I fought in the street, if I had to punch someone, it meant they sneaked on me. 
the eye don't find the distance. Like, so if, if you're close to me, if you cause, I'm gonna wear, I'm not, not offering, not switched on. Yeah. Uh, but the times that has happened, right, I've got to switch people off. Um, but it feels like that, it doesn't feel like, oh, it feels like that, you just touch them, and he's playing like fucking starfish on the floor. You know, <laughs> uh, but I, I've never followed through all that stuff. I don't do that stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's not, not me. I'm not saying what it is, what it is. I don't do that kind of stuff. Get out cold, I'll leave it. I won't sound out cold. If, if you get into a fight, actual physical to the streets, you've lost. Because your chances of getting losing are rising. Yeah. Proactive defense, I said before, but the, the judge. Proactive defense is stop it before it escalates. And people call a steel swan. How can you steal swan? You your face on the, on the bad guy. How is that steel? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, uh, you know when someone's going to try and switch you off. So you switch them off. Yeah. Well, yeah, you have loads of uh, Let me try to think of one. Yeah. I was working at a club. Called uh, Ice Doors, called Quinn's. So I was by myself, God, I was, dick. I was by myself. Why you be by yourself at the right club? So uh, it's going off downstairs. I run downstairs by the bar, it's jammed. By the bar is this, uh, this guy's having it. So it goes over. I said, what's going on? He says, he, he touched my woman's ass. Guy's woman's ass. So he knocked him out on the floor. So okay, move away. Move away. Now, lucky enough, my students went there for a night out. If I move, I have students there. And he goes, no, fuck, I have a go. And I don't teach in effective martial arts. I teach effective martial arts. So they moved away. So this guy, I'm trying to revive him and get him up. I get him up. He swings at me. He thinks I'm them. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I went in the elbow, dropped him, put my shoulder, took him out, up and up to the stairs. It's a long way, you know, fucking long way. So I got my shoulder like that there. Now, if you had friends, I'm fucked. Because they're going to come and get me. But he's by himself. So I take the top of the stairs. And as you come to the top of the stairs, it opens up into, into the city centre. So I sit him down. He wakes up. As I go again, fuck off, kick them. I'm not, not trying to not trying to kill the cuz, just trying to stop him. Sorry, so he's weird. Not trying to, so I'm not, I'm trying to stop him. He hit me. So he goes down again. And the police are there now. They've seen this. But they've seen him ever go at me. So I now I'm standing there thinking, yo, <laughs> camera check. <laughs> and the police come over to me and he said to me. Why did you finish him off? We don't like him. Why don't you finish him off? I thought, yeah, okay. I'll do that and you lock me up. You know what I'm saying, sir? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a way, mate, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been threatened loads of times we killed. Uh, <laughs> <and> the police. <laughs> Bloody hell. Bloody no, hell. Like the police, police comes to me one time. Because uh, you're on the doors, you see. And every, every criminal in the world wants to come in for your charge. Yeah. Everyone does. You know who I am? No. Pray tell. And he did, he did get upset when he walked him in. You know, diplomacy works 100%. One time the police come to your house, to your CID, and you go, uh, can I have a wager? It's okay, go to By yourself, so darling, and your wife, I had to leave, I to leave the room. He said, Mr. Lewis, we need to inform you. Your life is under threat. Uh, you're going to show them what to kill you. I said, that's not, that's not very nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm really not joking. I know, I know who he is. I know who he is. I had a discussion with the guy. I was, he said, he said to me, why don't you sort out for us? Because we don't like him. He does it all the time. Do all that all the time. That matters. I said, look. I said, if I do that to him, right, if I wipe him out, you're going to come out for that. You're going to lock me up. Plus, I don't use that. I don't use that. I use these. So you know people do. Stand and tell me to kill this guy. Really? That's real. What the fuck is that? 
They obviously yeah, had no. away for half a meter, didn't they? Ah! Like, so they wanted him out of the way, didn't they, for other reasons? Yeah, because he, 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 he was a handful. He didn't care. But I'm yeah. not about that. You know, that's their job. Uh, but my issue with that guy got resolved. Yeah, you we become friends. You know. uh, but he, he was an idiot. See, I respect the police. Right? Because they do a job that we can't do. But don't expect me to do your job for you. No, don't expect me to do your job for you. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm going to check it past, shall we say. I'm going to check it past. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I said. But uh, you know what? On the streets, I, I, my fear on the streets now is the eighth one. I talk about you get to a stage where you don't want to fight no more. Uh, and the fear is hitting someone and dying. Yeah. How's that? It's called full circle. Yeah. Guys, I see. To be true, I used to enjoy violence. I used to enjoy fighting. Uh, but you get to a stage in life where you go, if I walk in and he dies, yeah, then best it's fine. That's right, yeah. It's not even there. You go down, you go down, because you're trying to defend yourself. But uh, it, it's, it's the knock on effect of his, to his family. Cool. That's ridiculous. You know, yeah, the aftermath and it but, spreads with all the friends yeah, and family, you know, doesn't it? It's wrong, isn't it? It's wrong. People suffer. You don't need to suffer. But if he wasn't a dickhead, he wouldn't be dead. Yeah, that's right. You know? anyway, Actually, can, I ask you, to... can I ask you a little bit about, um, obviously, you've got your own training, you're training your own fighters, your own school. Can I ask you a little bit about that and sort of the name of it and stuff? Yeah, it's called Mushin Kai. Liverpool Mushin Kai. Musha means open by the Kyrie's club. So it's not, it's not a style, it's a concept. Yeah. And, and styles, styles hold you down, right? So the concept is is this. And each year I review what I'm teaching. And it takes a little time. So I, I, try, I try and evaluate it. Evaluate it. So I'm not necessarily changing, but I'm evaluating uh, it's some Marcus, the Dodds, uh, we saw Marcus, he lived on, he does, and you know, we, we saw the law, he's in Wales, the Carl Glover, he's in Air Cadet, he's on the other side, and other fractions who are also do we should carry directly, yeah. indirectly. Yeah, uh, so it, it's productive, it's, a, it's, uh, it's good to see it flourishing, you know, it's good to see it flourishing. I've got a guy also up in uh, Sheffield, he teaches my Gibson, but it, yeah. it's not just also sorry, Alaman. Alaman, the objective yeah. is to, just uh, ask you how, how did you find um, sort of the transition from being a fighter to becoming an instructor? The, the funny thing was, I, as I was fighting, I was teaching. Oh, right, so, so I used it went to, to work. Off. yeah, yeah, I used to work for the uh, the instructor, George Wellington, God rest yeah. his soul. Uh, I, I, for the age of 18, I was teaching. So I used to go to uh, Liverpool three times a week. I used to teach in Liverpool three times a week, three classes. And every Tuesday, I'd go to uh, Wrexham, out, out of Liverpool. And then on the Wednesday, so the Thursday, I'd go to Sheffield. For a private class, and I come back. I go to Stockport and teach Stockport. <coughs> then I come home. And Friday, I go to Manchester, <coughs> teaching Manchester. On a Saturday, I, I go to Chester, <coughs> I teach in Liverpool. On a Sunday, I go to Rumcord and Evesh uh, and um, Rumcord and Roger. So I'm busy. I teach all the time. Full full time. Uh, busy busy. Yeah, it was full time. This is back when I was 18. I was, wow. I was getting my good money. I, mean, I didn't have a car. So I travel I travel my, my, my train. Yeah. Uh, Alfie, can I just ask you, have you got any words of advice for anyone who would like to sort of get into sort of the karate or martial arts type or what sort of advice would you give someone? Uh, biggest thing is self-belief. Believe in yourself. 
make sure you have you have direction stick to direction do what you gotta do as hard as you can as it regardless of what people say but no one distract you because if you your journey they get spoiled they spoil your journey it's your journey forget them uh, also the biggest the best advice i give anyone look i have a free i'm a free spirit right i add to no one so the best advice i give you i give to everyone I said, the biggest gift you could give yourself is to be yourself. Yeah. The biggest gift you could be, and hard to be yourself when you're around different people, people wear different masks, different people. Be yourself and believe in yourself, and you won't go far wrong. I think we'd start to wind it up a little bit there. Um, but before we go, can I ask you, where can people find you if they want to contact you, or if they want to come and train with you? Or they like what you do and they want to follow you, etc. Oh, the police. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Go on Facebook. I'm Facebook, yeah. Facebook. I, I, I don't push myself. There's, there's no sign of, of a dojo. I don't advertise. No. People don't come, don't come, don't come. I'm not really bothered. I'm 60 years of age. Uh, I do what I've done. I'm enjoying my life. And kids. <laughs> I'm having a beautiful time, but I still teach. I love teaching. But you want to get taught by me, be prepared to hold truths. I won't yeah. say you're good if you're not good. You just had to work harder. I just talk yeah. straight. Uh, it's, it's not no longer PC, right? But I'm not PC. You're lucky I have a swore. I have a swore. Profanities are my go to. Right? <laughs> 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 you've you behaved. Just wanted to add in there, Alfie. You're also teaching on the uh, UK martial arts show, aren't you? 2023, you're on there. I'll be here. I'll be here. Uh, yeah. well, Bob Sykes, my students. Yeah. So, if anyone Sykes wants to guy, train with Bob. you, there's a, a good opening there to come and train with you. Well, yeah. But be aware, be warned. My class is the first class today. I know me. Uh, the big name's got later when everyone arrives. I don't want that. You want me? Come at 10 o'clock in the morning. Otherwise, I'm gone. Get Bill Wallace, yeah. get anyone else. I'm not bothered. I'm here at 10 o'clock. You turn up, get your hands off your ass, get in bed. You wave teaching. You don't get your ass, get, uh, get to the place. You don't wave teaching. But watch the last show. It's fantastic. Tiki was going to be there, you know. Tiki. Yeah. Thank you ever so okay. much for coming on. I really appreciate it. It's uh, absolutely been pleasure. superb. Thank you. Listen, uh, have a good life. I'll be happy, okay? Jewish brother.